Hi, friends. We come tonight um, to do a little devotion about Holy Wednesday. Um, we've been talking about Exodus, and we're going to continue to talk about Exodus tonight. Let's uh, begin with prayer. Um, my friends in Saltville will maybe know that there were two uh, persons who tested positive for the COVID-19 at Saltville Medical Clinic, so we do need to remember them in our prayers, um, as well as two who, um, there were a couple who tested positive at Utility Trailer and a couple who tested positive at Southwest uh, Virginia Mental Health Hospital. Um, we all have friends, um, some in our congregation that work at these areas, so we need to remember them in our prayers. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you tonight with uh, heavy hearts knowing that this virus is continuing to invade our lives and infect people that we may know and we may love. Um, and we, we just ask for your healing. We ask for your healing for those who have tested positive, those who are in the midst of this virus. We ask that you heal them and make them whole again. We ask for your protection over those who work in these places where where their co-workers have, have tested positive. We ask for your protection over healthcare workers, those who ha are continuing to go to work because you've placed a call on their lives to care for the sick. We ask that you just wrap your protection, your mighty hand of protection around them. Give them your protection that is better than any face mask. Keep them safe and healthy so that they can continue to care for people, can continue to fulfill their call in caring and helping others get well. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds tonight, that you would help us to hear your word for us in this time of isolation, of social distancing, that you would reveal to us your love and your presence that is always, always here. Amen. So we've talked a little bit about some things in Exodus, and um, we, we began on Monday talking about a little bit about um, Moses and the burning bush. When God reveals his name to Moses and to God's people, and we talked about um, that revelation was, I am who I am, or I will be who I will be, or perhaps I will be whatever I want to be. And that God's name is wrapped up in God's character and God's actions. And that that is who God will be known, uh, known as throughout history. And God will, will um, after the Exodus, God will call himself, I am Yahweh, the one who brought you out of slavery in Egypt. So God's name is wrapped up in his actions and in his character. We talked about yesterday, um, we, we went to kind of the towards the end of Exodus um, and talked about after the people, God had brought the people out of Egypt and they practiced that idolatry of the golden calf. Um, that idolatry that we often still practice today. That, um, you know, we, we put others, other things, other, other people before God. And so we, we still violate those first five commandments over and over by making idols for ourselves, whether it be 
um, money or power or the golden calf. We constantly do this. And we also see Moses intercede for God's people. And Moses' um, intercessory prayer to God for the um, salvation of the people called Israel. And that how Yahweh, because at his core is love, because his very being is love, relented and had mercy on those who practiced the idolatry. So we saw the importance of intercessory prayer. We saw the um, fact that God is love and God continues to be loved today. And then we saw the fact that sin has consequences. But then we also saw God um, reveal himself as a merciful God and a graceful, graceful God. And that God's love is infinite and God's judgment is finite. So we talked about that being good news. I want to back up today and go... Um, back in Exodus again to Exodus chapter 4 and this is kind of the continuation of um, Moses call because tomorrow night when we would um, usually celebrate the uh, Last Supper the Eucharist that Jesus commanded us to celebrate we'll be talking about the Passover so I wanted to um, lead up to that. And, and of course, we are in this week called Holy Week. And Jesus has come into the city of Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And we know that um, tomorrow night is the night that we celebrate that, that he had the Passover meal with his disciples. And he instituted that new, um, new meal, that new covenant with his followers. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, more about Moses' call. And I'm reading from Exodus chapter 4, and we're going to um, go through about, uh, well, we're just going to read a few verses at first, and we'll, we're going to go through about half of this. Uh, so we left off in chapter 3, and we'll, if you'll remember, we read this yesterday, um, God had come to, to Moses and told him of his intention to bring his people out of Egypt because he is a God who sees his people, who hears their cries of distress, and who remembers the covenant and, and the love that he has had for his people. And he just finished in chapter 3 telling them that they will... He will bring these people out and and actually give them spoils from the Egyptians as well. And Moses responds in chapter 4, Then Moses answered, But suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff. And God said, Throw it on the ground. So Moses threw the staff on the ground and it became a snake and Moses drew back from it then the Lord said to Moses reach out your hand and seize it by the tail so he reached out his hand and grasped it and it became a staff in his hand so that they may believe that the Lord the God of their ancestors the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you Again, the Lord said to him, Put your hand inside your cloak. He put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, his hand was leprous, as white as snow. Then God said, Put your hand back into your cloak. So he put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his body. If they will not believe you or heed the first sign, they may believe the second sign. If they will not believe even these two signs or heed you, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. And the water that you shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. 
But Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past, not even now that you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But Moses says, Oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What of your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak fluently. Even now he is coming out to meet you, and he, when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do. He indeed shall speak for you to the people. He shall serve as a mouth for you, and you shall serve as God for him. Take in your hand this staff with which you shall perform the signs. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. I always like that passage because, I'm going to be a little honest here, that was kind of my excuse when I felt God calling me to be in pastoral ministry. You see, my mother used to make me, um, she used to make me enter the 4-H speech contest, and I hated it, and I argued with her and argued with her. And every time I did it, but only because she made me. And every time I did it, I would throw up before I had to do it. I hated more than anything speaking in front of people. I was a straight A student in high school. I got to college and I did pretty good in my classes, except for when I had to take public speaking. And I failed it twice because I couldn't make myself go to give the speech. And so that was definitely one of my excuses when I feel like God is calling me to be a pastor. Really, you want, I can't even talk in front of people. I get sick every time I even try it. So I look at this um, passage and I'm reminded of God's words that who, who puts speech in our mouths? Who gives us the ability to speak? And that when God called Moses, he promises he will be with his mouth. He will be with him. And so I took a lot of comfort in the promise that God would be with me and that God was the one who actually gave me that ability to speak anyway. But I look at these um, excuses of Moses. You know, his, his first excuse is, what if they don't believe me? And God gives him these signs and then his excuse that, you know, he's not an eloquent, eloquent speaker. And, you know, I find something that while eventually God does get mad at Moses, it says God is angry. God listens to Moses' concerns. He listens to his concerns and he continues to, to um, give him reasons why his concerns aren't valid. But then he, it's almost like God says, okay, Moses. Okay, you're the one that I'm calling. But if you need somebody else, I'll let your brother Aaron go with you. Right? He, he doesn't correct 
uh, Moses speech and, and, and perform some kind of sign. He performs many signs, but he doesn't transform Moses' speech to where he is an eloquent speaker or able to, to speak well. He doesn't um, get rid of this problem. So that in itself gives me a little bit of comfort too that um, God doesn't always call perfect people to his tasks. Um, there's a saying that God calls people warts and all. And, and I kind of little take comfort in that because I feel like I certainly have um, some disabilities when it comes to communicating God's words. So, but it's not that this um, giftedness, and we, we see in the New Testament about the Holy Spirit giving spiritual gifts, it's not that this giftedness is, is irrelevant to God, but God uses our gifts, and we've talked about this many times before, He uses our gifts, and He brings others alongside us with different gifts, and uses us together for his purpose. And we're more successful than not. And God in this passage has discerned that Moses has this gift of leadership. And he wants Moses to be the one to bring his people out of Egypt. Moses with his, um, some scholars say it might be a speech impediment Moses, with whatever um, disability that he may have, God is still able to work through him to bring about his purposes. And then if you look, I'm not going to read the entire passage. So God kind of relents and says, okay, Aaron can go with you. So at the beginning we see that God's original purpose is for Moses to do this job, right? And and then we um, we see that God gets angry at Moses over and over. I'm not good enough. Over and over, they won't believe me and blah, blah, blah. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And it's almost like God goes to plan B. What if your brother Aaron, the Levite? He can speak fluently. So, God allows Aaron to come alongside Moses. And he says, you know, God's, God will give Moses the words and Moses will give the words to Aaron to speak to the Israelites and speak to Pharaoh. But if you look through and if you continue to read in the Exodus, in the in the through the plagues and through um, through the beginnings of the Exodus, the Passover, and so forth, Moses ends up speaking on his own. Moses ends up being the one to communicate to the Israelites and to Pharaoh. Moses kind of gradually works himself into this role that God originally intended. So plan B, this plan B of Aaron coming alongside Moses, is kind of just a, a temporary, an interim plan until plan A can return and Moses can take charge. If you look in the, the climactic event of the Exodus in chapters 13 and 14, when they come out of Egypt, that doesn't mention Aaron. So God kind of adjusts to the circumstances of Moses' reluctance to serve in this capacity. and gives him someone to come along beside him 
and give him the strength to carry out the purpose that God has intended. And I'm very thankful that God does that in our lives. God brings somebody alongside us to give us strength to carry out the mission that God has for our lives. And I want to ask you um, to think about that, to think about what mission does God have for your life? What are your excuses? Who are the people that God has put in your life to kind of get you back on track, get you back to God's purposes? And thank him for those people. So tomorrow, we are going to finish our little um, study on Exodus, and we've not, certainly not done an intensive study, but we did talk a bit, little bit about yesterday how, um, well, we talked yesterday about the third section of Exodus. Exodus is divided into three sections. The first section is um, the Exodus. And if you'll remember on Monday, we talked about the time of Moses was known as the time where God made himself known to the, to the people. God was named to the people. Um, then the second part is uh, law. And then we talked about yesterday, the third part, the tabernacle with that little interlude there um, where God's people create the idol. So, so Exodus is generally divided into three parts, the Exodus, the law, and the tabernacle. But the book of Exodus as a whole, through those three parts, the Exodus, the law, and the tabernacle, is about God's presence with his people. God continually wanting to be present with his people. And that's what I hope for you all listening and watching today. During this time where we're not able to go to our churches, where we're not able to see the people in the pew next to us, while we're not able um, to hug our uh, pastors, our friends, our loved ones, we're not able to sing praises to God together, it can seem like God may be far away from us. But remember that God, our God, is a God of chesed, faithful covenant love. Our God is a God who desires more than anything to be present with his people. And through the Holy Spirit, our God is with each one of us. So I, I implore you, if you feel as if God is far away. I'm just a phone call away and I can, I would love to talk to you about it. But know that God is with you through this, with you in your loneliness and with you in this social distancing. And I would, again, be glad to pray with anybody who, who wishes it. Um, but just remember that God is with you. Let us pray. Father, we, we do thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence through the Holy Spirit with each and every one of us. Even in this time when we may not feel it, we may not see it through the faces of others, 
or we may not feel it through the, the touch and the love of others. We know that you are with us. We know that you are with each one of us. And we praise you and thank you for that. Amen.